our talk about the powerhouse, which a uh, plus energy building uh, project realized in uh, Nordic climate conditions. And uh, I am from the architectural office Neheta. And what you can see in the background is the mountain in Norway. It's 2,280 meters high. So keep in mind when I talk about the plus energy buildings that they are really uh, realized in harsh Nordic climate condition and not in continental Euro climate, which is uh, an extra uh, special condition. And uh, as you can see here, my company, we always uh, do a, a tour to the Snöta mountain where we also have our name after. And also working with this plus energy building is a little bit uh, like this image symbolized that you don't know where you have to find your way in this very uh, harsh climate. And when you actually reach the goal, you are quite happy. So we have projects uh, all over the world with a concentration in Northern Europe and um, also continental Europe and offices in Oslo, New York, San Francisco, Innsbruck and uh, some smaller offices in Singapore. And uh, the main offices are located in Oslo and New York. And it's a little bit uh, <laughs> funny when you look at the bird view that uh, the location is actually quite similar, even though we are on a quite uh, different part of the uh, world. And we have uh, our office is organized interdisciplinary. So we have uh, architects, interior designers, landscape designers, also brand designers within our company. And when I talk about plus energy buildings, I think it's qu quite um, important to keep in mind that it's a lot about collaboration, thinking about the thinking out of the box, and a lot of sharing uh, knowledge. So this is also the main attitude we have in our office, working together in teams, sharing knowledge, the open space, and also the project, uh, what was mentioned um, just before the opera, that for me is actually uh, our <laughs> uh, realized most uh, uh, sustainable building because it's all about social sustainability. And as you can see at the roof, we have this enclosed cultural pub uh, public program in the building, but actually the roof is the public space. It's a gift back to the city context. So, and it's, I drive uh, across the opera <laughs> several times a day, and there are always people uh, on top. And uh, as it also was mentioned, we are currently developing the headquarters for Le Monde, where the public space also is an important issue handling that kind of uh, project. The powerhouse, the plus energy building. So why is it so important that we uh, are kind of dealing with that part of the building uh, development. When you look at this um, installation of a German artist, politician uh, discussing global warming. Um, today, building industry, it stands for 40% of the world's energy consumption. And in 2050, it will be about 100% uh, if we don't act now. And also the European Union has this quite ambitious goal that uh, most of the new buildings should be almost energy neutral in 2020. So the Powerhouse Alliance, it's a collaboration model that was founded in 2010 even, at, uh, and they have a kind of, or they have the ambition to develop plus energy buildings together. So it's a consortium that is, consists of an architect, uh, uh, developer, um, uh, yeah, and uh, several organizations that together have this goal. And also there's a lot of different uh, definitions on plus energy buildings. So the Powerhouse uh, Alliance has agreed on this definition. So that the Powerhouse is a building that during its life cycle produces more renewable energy than it consumes for production of building materials constructions, operation, and demolition of the building. And the building should also be built under uh, commercial conditions, which also is a part of the sustainability concept. What does it mean then uh, when looking at the building? Yes, it's that the operational en energy demand and the embodied energy. So we have included uh, all the energy that is consumed for the materials which is quite uh, new when, you, uh, when you're dealing with plus energy building, uh, that this should be less than the production of renewable energy on site. 
So this is a, is a very easy model to have in mind. So what are the key factors for the succeed of this project? How do we do it? As I mentioned already, the new collaboration models is quite important. We have worked a lot in workshops and also sharing knowledge. A little similar as we worked in our office, it's also uh, very important uh, for the succeed. So it's an interdisciplinary working model from the very beginning. So from the very beginning, all the engineers, the architects and the energy experts sit around one table and share the knowledge and uh, try to kind of shift um, uh, shift positions also. A dedicated and ambitious leadership, of course, that's important that you always stick to the goal that you have started with. And the, as I mentioned, the interaction and the interdisciplinary design process as a key factor to succeed. As an architect, it's also very interesting when you include uh, uh, the environmental conditions while developing architecture, it also leads to a quite different typology, which is quite interesting uh, when you work with this uh, this kind of projects. And also the aim of changing the building industry, also in, uh, especially thinking of the, the working model and uh, including the, um, the uh, focus on use of materials. So I will start to go a little bit more deeper how this powerhouse works. And I will start with the powerhouse Sherbo, which is, as far as we know, the first refurbished plus energy building in the world in Norway, <laughs> which I think is. So it's, what are we then looking at? It's an office building. It's about 5,000 square meter um, large. It's completed in April 2014. And the energy demand is uh, reduced by 90%. And it's energy positive over lifespan, as I mentioned, of 60 years. And it's BREEAM outstanding as well. So we also include the BREEAM in, in this uh, uh, work. So these are the two buildings uh, that we have looked at, which are part of a bigger, um, uh, bigger um, organization of buildings at this site. So these are the three um, main um, elements that I will uh, lead you through that are necessary to work with when you uh, develop plus energy buildings. The first of all is minimizing energy consumption. Of course, uh, I think there are a lot of architects in the audience. The building envelope, the facade, is a key uh, essence in the succeeding with those projects. So it has to be super tight. In winter, you don't have to, the heat doesn't uh, have to leak out. And in winter, also, the building has to stay cool. And also, it's the balance between high insulated wall and daylight. So this facade consists of 40% windows with very high U values. That's what it looks, uh, the original building. And one condition for this proje project especially that we had to keep the facade expression that has to do with the municipality and regulation issues. So we had to keep this black uh, expression. This is the aluminum facade from the 80s. So we took this expression further and uh, changed it into wood. And what you can see here, it's the wood cladding. It's a very old Japanese uh, way of treating wood that you burn the outer surface and that uh, is kind of protected against weather condition. And then it doesn't need any um, maintenance afterwards. The ventilation system, of course, very important. It's a very com compact system with uh, low velocities and, uh, um, and compact uh, technical installations and it reduces the energy demands to one-eighth of the uh, uh, conventional system. So we have a direct air intake at the facade to keep all the technical infrastructure as uh, um, less as possible. This is from the building site on the building pyramid. And displacement ventilation, which means that you put large air volumes at the bottom of the room and then the kind of internal loads of the room will kind of will um, mix the air and the temperature. So you don't need so much technical infrastructure to make this uh, system work, but it requires, of course, much more um, calculation before you, you... So planning is a key factor also in this uh, project here. This is from the building side. 
and also the building integrated shafts and air ducts. Since we have, uh, we are using a low, um, we have large air volumes, but they go with low speed. We can also use, for example, internal staircase as shafts, which also then is a kind of um, you both you, you both use building elements as technical elements as well. So you save materials and infrastructure when you are thinking in, in those ways. So very easy uh, summarized, it's to use the knowledge on technology, but to use as little as, as technology as possible in, in those kind of projects. As I mentioned earlier, embodied energy, so also the, the use of energy and the, um, and the energy that is embodied in all the materials are calculated in uh, the big energy calculation. So that means that we have carefully picked all the materials um, for this building. A uh, lot of material, uh, natural um, materials, but also materials that require slow maintenance and have a, a low carbon footprint. Recycling, also a quite uh, important uh, part of those projects. We kept all the concrete uh, structure of the building and we re reused actually the facade glass for interior, as you can see here. And also the recycling, the acoustic elements that you see on the left side are recycled plastic bottles that we kind of turn into uh, acoustic elements. Producing energy on site is also um, necessary when you uh, want to turn a building into a plus energy building. And we looked at several possibilities to produce energy. But when it comes to el electricity, a PV is the most efficient uh, energy production source, actually. Also, when you include, look at windmills and uh, other alternatives, it turns out that PV, uh, by now, with, with the day daily uh, technology, is uh, still the most efficient uh, possibility. This is from the installed on the roof. And also, we used uh, thermal energy uh, for the heat exchange. Optimizing energy use, this is also very important. How do you use the building? How do you operate the building? How do you uh, save as much energy as possible? So it starts already in the planning proce process, of course, how you lay out the plan, where you put the cell offices, where you put the open landscape, so that it's easy to uh, demand control the, the project later. And also where they put the courts and the where you put the different functions. So the central core, of course, in this building, is, it's both about uh, um, spatial zoning, but it also collects the different te technical infrastructure and, and programs. Um, one also balance you have to deal with is that you need the uh, exposed thermal mass to balance the, uh, the, cli the indoor climate. And that means that you have to expose 40% of the concrete ceiling. But then again, you have to solve the acoustics, so uh, then manage to develop a system that both can, um, can expose the concrete uh, floors and then still is able to, to regulate the acoustic requirements. Lighting concepts, um, um, which has to do with zoning and demand control. I will show you, show you some images, but the problem this was how it was before and how we visualize it under the planning process and how it's after. So it's very close actually to the initial concept and uh, idea we had how this uh, could uh, be turned into life. How it was before, quite ordinary <laughs> office building of the 80s, dark and not very nice to look at, how it's visualized and how it's actually realized. So we actually managed uh, also due to this very close cooperation model that we all stick to our ambitions, manage to realize it as we have uh, had envisioned it uh, before. Here see some images from the interior. The internal staircase that I mentioned that also functions as an air duct, actually. So what we, we say about the project, it hasn't changed so much the, f the exterior, but it has changed very much the soul, since most of the changes happened uh, inside. So this is a summary. What is actually, uh, it's a toolbox actually, what is necessary to, to, to develop a plus energy building as we did here in this uh, condition.
The next project that is under development would actually had to, to, that was actually the plan that that should be the first project in the powers aligned, but it now turns that it's the second one, the line. It's a new um, building. It's located on the very north of Norway. You can see it here, where the red arrow is. So it's actually even more north, uh, north than the Oslo zone. So this is a new building, means that the kind of um, difficulty degree rises because we can't uh, we can't include existing building structures. So we have so we have to account for all the the concrete that is also necessary to to rise the building. So here again a summary for it's the same actually the same toolbox that uh, applies for a new building as for the refurbished uh, building. So we looked, uh, first of all, we looked very much basically to the site-specific condition, doing some measurements of uh, solar energy and uh, how to orientate the building, how do we could use the wind power and wind pressure maybe to include it into the ventilation system, and also how we optimize the facade and the, the building shape to, to harvest as much possible solar energy as possible. Some visualizations from the project, as you see here, city context, and uh, a comparison between the, the uh, ordinary um, office building in Norway and how we calculated the, uh, our new building in comparison to that. So it's really a big step. <laughs> and uh, taking the, um, uh, when we look at Powers Scherbel, our calculation were exactly the one after now one year in uh, use. They are very precise. So we can really rely on the, the calculation that we do while planning the uh, project. So this is from the urban context, looking back to the city. Yes, that was the last image. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup pour l'attention. Merci. Merci, Yeta. Donc oui, merci pour euh, les présentations à la fois des solutions techniques, mais on l'a vu également, il s'agit d'un modèle de, de coopération.